What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we're going to be discussing the newly released Virtual DJ 2020 as an update to the Virtual DJ 2018 application. So we're going to be taking a first impression look at what's new in the system and is it worth your upgrade? Let's go. So I know that Virtual DJ has been out for about a week now and I've had plenty of opportunities to give my first impressions video, but I kind of wanted to wait. I wanted to actually use it on an actual gig or two, feel it out, see if any of the changes actually made any sense. So that's why it took a while. I know everybody, when it first came out, you saw video after video of Virtual DJ and that's great, good for them. But for me, I needed to wait just to be able to speak intelligently and not just kind of say all the things that Virtual DJ says it does. I needed to give my opinion based upon what I know that it does. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're not gonna talk about every single option that has come out with the software because that's not really where I'm going to. I'm pretty sure there's somebody else that has broken down the list of things. Today we're gonna to talk about the, 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 the largest changes, the pros, the cons of what I see in the new update. So let's take a look. So first things first, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. We know that that is the graphical user interface. Now, in my previous review, that was one of my biggest complaints about the software, that the user face was just ugly, unfriendly, uninviting, just not anything that I really wanted to use on a daily basis. It seems like in this update, Virtual DJ really took that to heart because right off the bat, you can see from the opening of the interface, it is so much more inviting. It's inviting to look at, it's inviting to use, it feels new, it feels current. And that was one of the biggest things for me. I'm a visual user. So if I'm using something and I don't like the way it looks, I'm not gonna like using it. That's just the facts, that's just the way I am. I know I'm not the only one, so let's not go with the whole skin thing because I know anybody can replace the skin. Sometimes you get more glitches than without the skins. Sometimes people forget about missing elements in the actual program. So when you go to the new layout, Something will happen, you go to change something, you realize it doesn't even exist, the button to access it. So it's just better, for me anyway, to just use what the company designed. That way I know it works the way it's supposed to work. Also, the virtual DJ logo that's found in the right-hand corner of the screen, that's far more subtle than it has ever been in the past. I think with this update, virtual DJ has made a real big emphasis on the actual feel and the focus on DJ. Now, I'm not gonna say that I had anything to do with this, but you can create a layout of most commonly used features for anybody new coming on board. So I know you have your, your beginner layout, but maybe the next layout is the most commonly used layout. And I think that would go a long way to making people feel a little more comfortable when they're using a program. Instead of going from, I'm, in, I'm a beginner, I know nothing to, I am a pro, I know everything, because there's a lot in the middle. Now there is this new drop-down interface, which I absolutely love, which breaks down different default layouts. One for beginner, one for intermediate, one for pro, and then one for, well, to be honest with you, I don't really know who that one's for, but the one that's for pro is the one we're gonna talk about. I absolutely love the pro layout. To be honest with you, once I made a couple of subtle tweaks and changed the job wheels to the data information wheels, I didn't have to change anything else. It was spot on. So virtual DJ, give yourself a round of applause. Give yourself a pat on the back. Whatever you gotta do, fantastic job. However, not everything is perfect. I have a little bit of an issue with the gigantic freeway AKA the waveforms at the top of the application. Some people might like them, but for me, I don't actually use them. So if you're using Serato or if you're using Virtual DJ in their layouts, you can change from a uh, vertical view to a horizontal view or vice versa. And I prefer the vertical view. Once you move to the vertical view, horizontal goes away. Now with Virtual DJ, you have the horizontal view, you have the scratch view, which gives you your vertical view, but you can't get rid of the waveforms. Now I know I'm not the only one that thinks this because I've been on their boards and I know this has been a big request. So uh, if I can have anything changed in the future of the program, it would be 
to remove those top waveforms or at least make them smaller. You gotta be able to adjust them out. Um, I'd rather have more real estate for my file structure or for my effects board. Whatever I'm using, I'd rather have that than have that up the top. It's a con because you can't remove it, you can't toggle it off. That's a little bit of an oversight in my mind. You've created all these fantastic layouts, but you didn't put anything in to remove the waveform. So hopefully in the future, in a future update, they can throw a little toggle on there because I don't want it to go away. I know some people use it, I just don't. So I'd love for it to be able to just be hidden away. So I've used it for a couple of days now. I had a couple of gigs over the weekend. I used it exclusively on those days. Uh, I didn't have any problems with it. It was incredibly smooth, processor friendly. Uh, it was actually a joy to use. Well, it was a joy to use once I removed some of the auto sections that I knew I had off, but it seems like on the update, it reactivated them. So I took off the auto BPM and the auto pitch and the auto key, all of those things that I don't use. I turned off. So once I get rid of those things, it was really, really good. Um, I do want to mention that the back end, the settings pages, they don't feel like they've been changed. I mean, I know with the gray, it may look like they've changed a little bit, but I don't think they've had any major changes. There might have been some subtle changes because when I was looking for the things I needed to turn off, I found them much quicker than I did in the past. Now, that could be because I'm just used to the software, used to the way the software thinks I want to find things, but I was moving a little faster. So there could have been some slight change on the back end. I'm not really sure, but the back end is the back end. Um, maybe on the next update, the next major update, the back end will be, will be enhanced. But for right now, it's still the same as it was before. So it works with pretty much any hardware out there. I did all my testing exclusively on all of my Pioneer stuff. I didn't use any of my Rain stuff yet because I just haven't been at the warehouse, but I used it on my S9, I used it on my SX2, and my DDJ1000 record box version, not the SRT. And for the most part, it worked absolutely perfectly. Also, as far as turntables are concerned, I know a lot of people, including myself, use the Phase wireless DVS system. I know that it might've worked in 2018. I never used it in 2018 because it required a little more um, fine tuning, which I didn't want to do. I'm happy to tell you that in VDJ20, there is actually a drop down specifically for phase right in the system. You just hit phase and it knows you want to use phase. Everything's good, but there is a con. Now the con is a very strange con because it just doesn't make sense to me. So with Rekordbox, and Serato, if you are using the phase, once you basically plug it in and tell it, I'm using record box, I'm using Serato, so it knows the tone frequency to use, you can unplug the cable from within your computer and then plug it into a power source and you can use the phase with no wires going into your computer. However, with Virtual DJ, if it's not plugged into the system, to the computer, they don't work, which is very odd to me because the other two work right out of the box with no issues, but this one needs to be plugged in. Once you unplug it, it just disconnects from the system. And then once you plug it, you regain control. Um, so that's a little weird. I hope that they can fix that to where you can see the benefits of not having to plug it in because it's so much more convenient to not have to plug it into your computer. Uh, also, if somebody else is using, if you're swapping through DJs, it's more convenient if it's plugged into a power source because then all they do is plug in the USB for the mixer, done. They're off and running, nothing to worry about. But this way, now you gotta have two things to unplug. It's just, it's just a little more work. One other thing that I didn't realize that it could do, but it does do is that when I was messing with my uh, Rekordbox XP1 controller, I thought I was plugging in my phase USB, but I accidentally plugged in my XP1. And sure enough, right on the screen, Virtual DJ says, hey, you wanna use this XP1? So I said yes, and then all of the things populated correctly on the XP1, and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, because we all know that record it's a record box only product. So if you're using Serato, you can't use it without having to MIDI map it. Well, Virtual DJ has done the MIDI mapping for you. I was really, really happy, but it's a little glitchy. Once again, my pads are not active. But they are working just fine. Um, 
while the cue points are there. Sometimes you'll load a song and then the cue points disappear. It's all white, the cue points work. Sometimes they don't work. If you set a cue point on the XP1, it doesn't translate all the way through. So that's an issue. It does utilize the silent cue, which is the first software outside of Rekordbox to utilize the silent cue button. When you hit the silent cue, it mutes it. That's amazing. Great job on that one. And about the silent cue. So the silent cue works as a mute, but here's the thing. On Rekordbox, when you hit the silent cue, it's on. The moment you hit a cue point, it takes it off of silent, because that's the point of having silent cue, being able to keep it open, being able to keep the fader open. But on this one, if I hit the cue point, it doesn't unmute it. I have to hit the mute button again. So it kind of defeats the point of the silent cue. Maybe there's something that I can do, but right now there's no override. So silent cue doesn't really work in this respect. I think this is a game changer for a lot of people who thought that, oh, I can only use this on Rekordbox or now with the new XP2, which we won't talk about in this video because it's really annoying. And I want to leave all of my frustration on that video, another video altogether. But the fact that I know that Virtual DJ will work with the XP1, if we can get that to be as flawless as it is like using Rekordbox, then there'd be no reason for me to have to go get the Rekordbox Serato version. I could stay with this one. And I think for the most part from what I'm seeing here, most of it's already built in there. So we just need to figure out why it's not 100%. And VDJ, I'd be glad to work with you on that one. So if you need me, just, uh, you know, send me an email, give me a call. And last thing, the effects. Did I see an improvement on the effects? No, they're all the same. They still work the same. Um, they're still just okay. For a lot of people, they're gonna be just fine. I just think they're okay. Um, as I said before, when I use my S9, not a big deal. I can use the hardware effects in there. When I use my DDJ-1000, I do have to use their effects. It's not as bad on the 1000 versus the SX2. Uh, there are a couple of tweaks that need to be made. Um, for instance, you gotta turn off some things in the effects, turn off the tail of the of the echo, and then everything gets back to normal. They're fine. Um, I don't really have any issues. They can be used. Are they as good as record box? No, but they do work. And like I said, I went through an entire, entire couple of gigs with it. They were usable. Now, in conclusion, I am going to say that I think that Virtual DJ is the best universal software on the market. I have DJ Pro 2, which I'm supposed to be testing, but based upon what I'm seeing, I do believe Virtual DJ is probably going to be the better of the two just because of the connectivity with like the DDJ 1000, having those waveforms, having all of that data that only used to be used in Rekordbox, but it's also in the Virtual DJ software. Um, and it's not even in Serato. So whatever they're doing at Virtual DJ to try to emulate the other hardware configurations, uh, they're doing a great, great job. I haven't used DJ Pro, but based upon what I've seen and read the notes, like on the DDJ 1000, the waveforms aren't on there. It, it's, it's an asterisk, they actually said it's on there. Now, has there been an update that I don't know about? Maybe, and once I test it, I'll be able to tell you more. But DJ Pro does not work with vinyl. Virtual DJ does. So automatically DJ Pro loses because it does not work with vinyl. So up until it works with vinyl, Virtual DJ, that's that's the gold standard for universal software. Oh, forgot one thing. I know it's the same way in 2018, but when I was going to record my sets, I realized that there was no record option on the UI. You have to go into the settings, you have to hit record, and then you have to go back into your main page and then start mixing. And I believe like Serato and Rekordbox, that should be on the interface. You shouldn't have to go into the settings to record your mix. It should be an easy button that you collect with a little bit of a drop down that says I want it to be MP3, I want it to be Wave, and then a file name field, just like they do in both Rekordbox and Serato. And it can be as simple as just having the default. Maybe you default to MP3 and then a file name, or when you hit stop, the file name pops up and allows you to set the name of it and then save it. That needs to happen. It's just frustrating to have to go into settings just to record. Because sometimes I want to record on the fly. 
And I don't wanna have to think about going into settings to do that. I want it to be right there, hit the record, hit the record to be done and be done with it. So I think that's an easy fix. That's an easy little modification. Um, so if you can do that in the future, please do. So having said all that, it is the best universal software out there. I believe that with a few tweaks, like I said, with the waveforms and the recording, a few tweaks like that, I think it could be the best software for DJs. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why. It does all the things the big boys do, um, but it makes it universal. So you can use it with your Pioneer Record Box hardware or your Serato hardware. It gives you all the best of both worlds. If you are anything like me, where you're not beholden to any one software, and you like the flexibility of knowing that no matter what hardware you use, the software is gonna work for it. You need to take a hard look at Virtual DJ. You'd be dumb if you didn't. You'd be dumb if you didn't take a seriously hard look at Virtual DJ, because it really is a great, great platform. Um, will I be using it from this point on? I don't know. I am really, really impressed with Virtual DJ. I'm really impressed. I'm gonna keep using it for a little while and uh, we'll see. It might be my go-to software. All right guys, that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said here really useful, hit that subscribe button. I'm a little late on this video, so I wanna make sure that I get into the recommended list so make sure you hit that like button if you really found it useful i know just like me you'll go through a whole bunch of videos and you're like that was great and you just go to the next video and you don't realize that the likes and the subscriptions they really do make a difference so guys all right leave a comment below let me know what you're using let me know if you've used it and what you think and uh we'll have a conversation all right guys if i don't talk to you later we'll talk soon peace by the way, this is the second time I've made this video. When I first made the video, I was out of focus the entire time. So this is my second time today. <laughs> Good times.